questions were, what do we really want as a company from open source? What do we expect? How should we set our short-term goals, long-term goals? How should we define uh, our open source strategy? Uh, based, of course, on the external best practices and our uh, uber-specific business needs and priorities. Uh, and to do that, we actually uh, looked back at our history from 2009, uh, and we analyzed the four different uh, key activities and the benefits that they have already provided. So uh, this was uh, actually for us uh, the, the base for uh, defining our goals. So consuming, I mentioned Uber was an active open source consumer since day one. This is uh, significantly improving the speed of innovation, reducing the time to market uh, for releasing new products. We were also, uh, since day one, active contributors to these open source projects, uh, contributing back to, uh, to the mainstream release, bug fixes, improvements, new features, to make sure basically that uh, Uber is not the only maintain maintainer of uh, these features and we share uh, the R&D cost with uh, the wider community. Uh, I mentioned that uh, especially since 2016, Uber has been very active with open sourcing internal projects, releasing platforms, tools, frameworks to the <coughs> excuse me, to the community. Uh, and the fraud activity was uh, basically collaboration, being part of uh, standardization work groups, policy making work groups, the wider community which is defining uh, best practices and uh, standards uh, within some industry. Excuse me. So uh, we, we analyzed uh, all across these four activities what are the key benefits we were already observing uh, in our uh, brief history with open source. And uh, one of the top benefits was uh, engineering economics, of course. All across the board, every one of these activities is contributing to improving engineering efficiency, improving engineering economics, reducing our R&D cost, basically, not being the only maintainer and the only contributor behind uh, some platform, but uh, sharing, sharing this initiative with the wider community. The second key benefit we observed was actually related to talent acquisition and, of course, internal talent retention, uh, and uh, especially the creation, uh, the, the contribution, contributing back to the upstream release, creating new open source projects and being part of uh, wider community collaborations. These type of activities were heavily contributing to the uh, talent acquisition uh, benefits. Basically, all, all these activities uh, help us promote the Uber tech brand, uh, attract top talent to the company, demonstrate how we are building solutions for challenging problems that uh, maybe nobody else was able to build. Uh, and the last benefit we, we observed was actually industry alignment, joining forces with other companies, with other organizations to share best practices, to define best practices, to define new emerging standards, uh, to build new partnerships, new business opportunities and especially the creation and the collaboration type of activities were heavily uh, contributing to this in industry alignment benefit. So this is how bottom up by looking at uh, our historical track record, we identified the top three uh, uh, go strategic goals for our open source program. And of course, this was not enough we also needed some guiding principles uh, that will guide any kind of decision making. For example, shall we adopt a new open source tool? Shall we open source an internal project? Shall we join some uh, community initiative? So all these kind of decisions, of course, we had the strategic goals, but we also needed some guiding principles. And uh, the five guiding principles we agreed uh, on were 
well, first, always focus on the top three primary goals. Uh, second is uh, always align with Uber's business uh, strategy and business priorities. <clears throat> and of course, this is not specific just to the uh, open source program initiative. Um, any activity, any initiative within the company should be aligned with the top strategic priorities for your company, for the business. It should be reinforcing and supporting these strategic, activi uh, uh, strategic priorities instead of like deviating or creating uh, like resource constraints or mi misalignment. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, this must be true for the open source programs uh, in the company. Uh, our third guiding principle was uh, quality over quantity. Uh, especially in the early years, uh, 2012, 2000 and between 2012 and 2015, uh, I mentioned the open source uh, activities in the company were all driven bottom up by volunteers and enthusiasts. So everybody was super enthusiastic to open source as much stuff as possible. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, eventually, you, you are responsible for maintaining and making successful all these projects you're open sourcing. So uh, this comes with a great responsibility. Uh, and uh, uh, eventually, uh, we realized, actually, we need to focus on quality. And we, we phased out a lot of early stage uh, of projects that we open sourced between 2012 and 2015 because we decided they don't meet anymore our quality criteria and our sustainability criteria. So this is important. Uh, and of course, uh, probably the key, the key guiding principle, contribute liberally, but consume and create uh, cautiously. So contribute liberally. I mentioned uh, we've been contributing to upstream releases, bug fixes, performance improvements, new features since day one. This is, uh, uh, this is encouraged within the company. Everybody should do it because basically this way uh, we make sure that we don't deviate from the main release. We don't become the sole maintainer of some bug fix or some feature. We, we want to make sure these are adopted in the main release as soon as possible. So this should be very liberal activity within the company. But the other two activities, consuming new open source software uh, or creating new open source software, basically releasing internal projects to the open source community, uh, we should be uh, more careful about it. First, consumption, of course, uh, uh, all aspects related to licensing, compliance, uh, potential security risks, uh, potential technical debt, potential engineering effort needed. These need to be properly evaluated uh, before uh, these decisions are made. Uh, and regarding creating open sourcing new projects, as I mentioned, it's really important to think long term. Uh, how, are we, how are we going to ensure the sustainability of these projects? Who is going to uh, keep contributing to it? How are we going to build a community around it so that we can share the R&D cost with more organizations and the wider community instead of continuing to develop it only internally? So these are important decisions to make. And of course, last but not least, uh, related to the fourth activity, collabor uh, collaborating with the wider open source community. It's important, of course, to not reinvent the wheel, not fragment some industry or some uh, ecosystem, but to build upon existing solutions and platform, to be part of uh, standardization bodies, basically, to build new partnerships with companies working in the same area. So collaboration uh, is very important, and it helps to, uh, to ensure the long-term sustainability of an open source project. Uh, and uh, I mentioned, we, we analyzed the activities, we defined the top three goals, we defined five, uh, gui uh, five guiding principles, uh, basically, for uh, to help to, to serve as the North Star for any kind of decision related to open source. And maybe this looks like a bit of a 
very heavy process, uh, like adding too much bureaucracy to something which once uh, was driven completely bottom-up based on volunteers and enthusiasts. But actually, it's the opposite. The, the mission of the open source program team is not to become like the gatekeeper or uh, to, to add process and bureaucracy. It's actually to make things easier for everybody, uh, to, to encourage, to educate our developers about open source, about best practices, to ensure that uh, people think uh, long term uh, about uh, how to sustain their open source projects. So yeah, it's not about bureaucracy, it's, it's uh, the opposite. It's about helping people, ma making them more efficient. Uh, and uh, what are some of the success stories that we, we managed to achieve uh, uh, within our uh, history. Uh, we have more than 350 uh, open source projects on GitHub. Uh, there were more. <laughs> I mentioned that uh, eventually we phased out a lot of projects because we realized they don't meet our quality criteria anymore and the community quality criteria. But 350, impressive number. 2,000 uh, contributors uh, all around the world, external contributors, I don't mean uh, Uber engineers. Uh, this is also uh, a good uh, uh, evidence for actually succeeding to build a community around these open source projects instead of uh, you know being the only maintainer of some product or platform. And four of these 350 projects were actually uh, winners of the Info World Open Source Annual Awards. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's a heat map of uh, our global community of open source uh, contributors. More than 2,000 contributors all around, all around the world, uh, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia. Uh, and uh, uh, I mentioned in the beginning uh, the different business cases uh, that Uber is uh, building how Uber is becoming the, the largest global transportation network, offering multimodal transportation from, uh, from rides to uh, you know, drones, uh, micro-mobility solutions like scooters, integrations with public trans uh, transport networks. So the complexity of the business domain and the width of the business domain is huge. Uh, which means uh, we have a lot of space to innovate, to tackle difficult, difficult technical challenges. Anything related to machine learning, big data processing, and I mean really, really big data. Uh, Real-time computation, data centers, anything. Basically, uh, we have more than 50 mil uh, 15 million trips happening every day on our platform. We recently achieved 15 billion total trips uh, on our platform, 1 billion uh, food deliveries globally. So the scale is really enormous. The opportunities to find technical problems nobody has been able to solve so far is also endless. Uh, so what are some of uh, our uh, top success story showcases we were able to achieve? Related to uh, machine learning, uh, Pyro, the probabilistic programming uh, framework on top of PyTorch, uh, uh, and uh, Horovod is the uh, distributed uh, GPU-enabled deep learning training framework on top of TensorFlow. Uh, Horovod is actually an Info World uh, Award winner. Uh, related to large-scale monitoring, obs uh, observability. This is really important for a company uh, uh, such as Uber because our architecture is comprised of thousands of microservices, really complex uh, data flow, workflows. So it's important to actually have really reliable ways to, to monitor such large-scale infrastructure and architecture. Uh, Jaeger, uh, also an InfoWorld Award winner, uh, and uh, M3, uh, our large-scale metrics and observability platform based on M3DB, our open source time series database. Related to uh, infrastructure data centers, Kraken, uh, our peer-to-peer -peer, uh, Docker repository, 
it, it is again uh, InfoWorld Award winner from this year. It serves more than one million Docker images per day internally on our uh, infrastructure. Uh, Peloton, uh, our unified resource schedule, which is helping uh, mix together different workloads and, uh, uh, and provide optimal resource efficiency, which is important at our scale when you have many data centers and uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, nodes. Uh, specialty data stores and databases like H3, the geospatial indexing and querying database, or RSDB, uh, the GPU-based uh, analytics uh, database and query engine. Uh, visualization frameworks, advanced visualization frameworks that are helping you visualize really large data sets or uh, geo geospatial data in an efficient and uh, scalable way. So Kepler, VisGL, uh, these are very, uh, very popular, very successful visualization platforms. Uh, Ludwig is uh, another InfoWorld Award winner. It's a toolbox for uh, training and testing your deep learning uh, models without writing uh, any code. Uh, RIPS, the cross-platform architecture for building mobile uh, applications, and big data-related uh, uh, platforms like uh, Marmara and uh, Hudi. Uh, and uh, related to the collaboration activity, one of the four activities I mentioned, it's also really important to be part of the decision-making process to share and build best practices with the wider community. So uh, we joined the Linux Foundations, the Urban Computing Foundations, various foundations under the Linux Foundations umbrella, uh, like the Presto Foundation, uh, Open Chain Deep Learning Foundation. We're also part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, Jaeger was our first project there. And actually, great news just from a couple of days ago, 31st of October, Jaeger became a <coughs> top-level project for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which is actually a great achievement because historically there are only six projects that ever achieved that, including Kubernetes, uh, Envoy. Uh, so this is actually a great uh, achievement for uh, the Jaeger team who open sourced this project in 2016 and managed to build a large community uh, with a lot of showcases uh, for Jaeger. Contributing, one of the four uh, key activities for open source. I mentioned we've been an active contributor since day one, so pretty much any, any platform, any framework out there, we have been actively using it, actively contributing back, back fixes, performance improvements. This is just a partial list. Uh, and uh, what, what does this mean for our team here uh, in Sofia? So our team, our charter, and our mission is uh, about uh, financial reporting, financial analytics uh, products. This is actually uh, a business critical uh, activity for the whole company. How do we benefit from open source? Well, open source is all about collaboration. Uh, and collaboration is actually very important. And uh, at some scale, it's not always easy, not always efficient. Uber, for example, uh, has uh, 15 engineering offices all around the world, uh, North America, Brazil, South America, Europe, India. Uh, so uh, it's actually important to, to have ways to collaborate more with your teammates from the other side of the world. And uh, we saw already uh, our internal open source landscape is uh, really huge, covering all kinds of uh, advanced technologies, big data, machine learning infrastructure, advanced visualization. So this provides for us uh, endless learning opportunities. All of our teammates have uh, easy uh, access, basically. If they want to learn, to experiment with a new technology, they don't need to look that much further. There is already uh, something relevant uh, within our open source program, internal open source project. It is also easy for us to start collaborating more with our partner teams all around the world to be part of this community. It is easy for everybody to quickly get up to speed and 
you know, start learning, start helping with this project. And based on this uh, collaboration, actually, we've been able to establish long-term mentorship relationships with really senior, really experienced staff, principal engineers uh, from Uber, Uber around, uh, around the world. So this, this is helping us tremendously uh, with our career growth, building more relationships, getting mentorship within the company from really experienced engineers. Uh, and uh, again, coming, concluding with the community initiatives, we've been very active with uh, uh, the local open source community initiatives, regular presenters and contributors to this very same conference. We've had actually, uh, on a couple of occasions, members of our open source program office uh, uh, from San Francisco visited Sofia, talked at local events, shared best practices about open source sustainability, about bootstrapping your program. Uh, and uh, yeah, as a conclusion and key takeaways, uh, you can use open source as a competitive advantage, basically to, to drive uh, forward engineering economics, to attract top talent, and to be part of uh, industry alignment work groups. Uh, of course, uh, you need to be clear on what are your goals. We defined the top three goals for us. What are your guiding principles? We defined the five principles, decision-making principles for us. And uh, the last, but probably most important point is you can start today within your company to drive forward these initiatives. You don't need to set up a formal open source program office since day one. You can do it informally uh, pretty much uh, from the beginning, just like Uber started doing it 10 years ago. Eventually, you will need to uh, put more structure and formalize it, but you can actually start uh, building these informal, uh, enthusiast, volunteer-driven initiatives from day one so that you can use open source as an advantage. Thank you. So guys, if you have any questions for Marin. Uh, yes, thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, my question is how you decide which, op which part of the code or the technology to open source? <clears throat> so uh, this, uh, uh, this is a super important question and that's why I mentioned that uh, you can't continue with ad hoc disorganized processes for open sourcing. You should be, basically, of course, you don't want to release uh, IP, intellectual property. You don't want to release trade secrets or something uh, which is really uh, an advantage for your company, uh, probably patented advantage or something like this. So you need a way to evaluate if open sourcing some internal project is actually creating risks for the company which means it will violate our second principle that Uber business comes first, basically. All our decisions should be compliant and aligned with Uber's business priorities and not creating additional risks. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Catch. Hi, um, do you have any advice for when you're going into a business where there's no previous experience of open source and executives are more focused on the business objectives and less focused on the kind of um, values that open source um, promotes? Like, how, what, what are your, what's your advice for taking those steps and helping them see the light? So my advice is go back to the top strategic uh, goals, priorities. Every company uh, cares about engineering efficiency, economics, uh, reducing time to market. Every company cares about uh, acquiring top talent, attracting top talent, and retaining the existing talent in the company. And every company should also care about partnering with other companies within the same industry in, instead of creating like custom solutions or fragmenting the community. So, uh, of course, you need to fi find your way to, to sell these ideas to your uh, VPs or like senior leaders. You need to find specific examples how 
how, for example, these three activities for us, how they're c helping alleviate some of the pain points that your company is already seeing. But if you, if you look at them and then uh, try to find examples of specific pain points that each of them will address, this will already be a solid sales pitch for your senior leadership executive team. Good. Do we have any, question, any other questions from the audience? For Marine right now? Okay. In this case, I want you to give a final round of applause for Marine. Thank you. Thank you.